Welcome again everyone to another teaching on the Alak Emmet channel on YouTube. Find me as well on Twitter and Patreon as Rethinking the Torah. Here I've got another lesson for you today titled, I Am Going to Heaven. And I was thinking that there's all this talk about going to heaven that we've heard of from the writings of ancient times and certainly in the Bible as well. And uh, nobody seems to be going to heaven except in those different books. And people today who say that they went to heaven, they had like this dream and they went to heaven in their dream last night and they'll use other nice terms like the open heaven and so on and it, it still grabs you you usually like hearing those kinds of dreams and stories and whenever someone can write about it or make a lesson about it what heaven is like it really does catch your attention it's always interesting to hear especially when they're telling you some end time stuff that was revealed to them in the dream but it's still not you know, on par with the visits to heaven that was in the Bible, with the older New Testament. It seems, though, that the New Testament ramped up on its stories about going to heaven, its teachings about going to heaven, like it ramped up on the miracles in the New Testament more than the kind of miracles that you saw, the number of miracles that you saw in the Old Testament. But I was thinking that when you look in different areas of life, people try to upgrade processes, change procedures, make things function different in different areas of society and in their own personal lives as well, to make things a little bit easier or make things look a little bit more relevant to the times and to what they're doing, like even in someone's own home, you change stuff. I remember one time I made, I had some pieces of board laying around, so I made, I got a power saw and I made my own garbage box. Um, I didn't have the regular plastic containers and I was too small anyway. So I made the, the big box that could hold both the garbage and the recycling containers in that one big box until garbage day. So I got the power saw, cut up the wood and so on and built it and then I made a lid um, that could open and close and I was pretty happy with it because it kept out the animals and uh, um, so what that did was it kind of changed things for me because instead of having the garbage laying around in the open where they could get to it and then giving myself a little frustration. You know, some of these plastic garbage bins, the lid sometimes kind of just gives you a little resistance when you're trying to open it. Um, and then you got to squeeze it back down, push it down to, to let it snap back and so on. It's just, you know, it's not a big deal, but the lid, the door, the wooden lid, lift it and close it easily and the animals can't lift it to get into it on their own. It's too heavy. So it kind of made the whole garbage handling a little bit more pleasant for me. So I changed something right there, improved something, um, my own garbage handling in my house. And uh, you look in other areas, like in the education system, they try to make changes there, revamp that all the time. In the airport systems all over the world, people change that every now and then to make it easier for people to connect with their flights and so on. So what an airport function like 30 years ago, you'll find certain little changes today. And uh, even passports change sometimes, the rules surrounding all of that stuff, your baggage going on the plane, these things get changed sometimes, um, the size of the luggage, things like that regulations dealing with even putting car uh, gas in your vehicles and so on 
So people are changing stuff. They change all this stuff, even on your job. You have teams set up from your boss to uh, come together and figure out ways how they can um, make services more accessible, products and services more accessible, more beneficial, and easily usable by the public who's going to come and get it. The same in your society as a welcomer to your country as a place they can go to set up by the government in different cities for newcomers to the country, how they can get, you know, settled and assimilated into the societies um, easier. So people change stuff, right? Um, and you've got constitutions written, you know, that get looked at and changed, upgraded in certain ways or to clarify them more and more. But the Bible has been around for so long because people say God gave this word thousands of years ago and he talked about heaven, heaven, heaven. And he never seems to upgrade the word in the Bible so that people can get access to heaven a little more easily than people who got access to heaven um, in the Bible. Like they said Enoch was taken there. Elijah went up to heaven, New Testament Paul, said he had this trip to seventh heaven or whatever number he placed on it. But like Elijah, um, I mean, like some other people, Paul didn't get to stay, but, you know, Elijah and um, others like Enoch seem to have stayed there. The thing, though, is that God doesn't try to, like streamline the whole thing and just make it more accessible to people to get to heaven, seem that heaven is taught to us as the better place to be. It seems to me like earth is the heaven. Earth is heaven. Earth is the place you really want to be, but somehow someone has given you religious teachings to twist your mind so that you think someplace else is the place you want to be. And yet, the people who have the money to publish these things internationally, these kinds of books that tell you about heaven like this and the different versions of these books, these religious books, they're the same ones, when you check it out, who are rushing in to conquer your land, right? Confiscate land and ruin the people there in that land and so on and, and kill them. But you figure that if heaven is so desirable to get to, why are they going through all of that just to get a land down here? <laughs> you know, why, you know? But the thing is that instead of blaming them more, you should more blame God. Because God does not try to upgrade the book that supposedly he gave to make it easier for people to get into heaven. Everybody is just changing everything. They don't want to, you know. You've got my steering wheel here. Straightforward, simple, regular steering wheel. But then I'm thinking... Like my other car, I want to get one of those things to put over it, make it more comfortable. And it's, you know, more comfortable to hold. In winter as well, you get in the car, it's cold. That other one I used to have from the other car, I, I don't know, I I should have saved it. Um, more comfortable to touch in the winter, instead of grabbing the cold wheel. Um, so all kinds of little changes, but God doesn't try to change anything. Now... God should be trying to make heaven easier for people to get to after all this time. But it seems man changes stuff all the time, processes, procedures, and so on, because man is actually acting smarter than God. Now look at Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand means it's coming soon. That's the understanding that we had all along. Yet after all this time, we still can't, we still can't find this heaven happening yet. He really should be changing and making it easier. Like if you can do all kinds of wicked things in your life, because you see, everybody is, heaven is set up with God, the God of the Bible, where you have to die to get there. And then we turn around and teach people this is a place of life and blessing. A place of blessing, but your family and friends are boo-hoo and crying because you're gone there. After they put you down into the grave, you're gone there and you're crying. Shouldn't you be happy? Oh, he made it there. He's gone to heaven. But no, people are crying and boo-hooing. 
that somebody has gone to be with the actual creator. You see that? So, it's heaven is more a place of death, or the entrance to it is through death. God should change that in his book. The reason why he's probably not changing it is because he never gave the book. So it's not his. It's not his to change. So, if people are dying to get to heaven, if it's really God's book and he told people these things, then he could have changed it by now to say, instead of having to die, wait until you suffer in some really bad sickness that takes you out after a long period of pain, and then you die and you get to heaven. Maybe I'll say, if you've come through all kinds of struggles in your life, people have done some cruel things to you, and you struggled to make it through without revenging and getting back at the people who hurt you and so on, who hurt you seriously, you deserve heaven. You've gone through that for 20 years. Come up here. You don't have to bother live till you die. Heaven is yours now. Come. Or even if he lets you live out your life till you die, at least you know you are guaranteed heaven. Instead of having to worry, did I do right all my life? I might go to hell. Because you did 20 years of going through stuff until you come through it and you didn't revenge people. Then, or you take like some king from ancient times or some prime minister or president today who has the power to just drop bombs, send an army, uh, troops and shoot up a lot of people, kill and just bomb them, drop bombs on the people and send their missiles at them and now there's this whole threat of nuclear war and so on. And so if a country has a prime minister who's not, and an army who's not going to go in and try to retaliate and fight back and kill because they were attacked or something bad was done to them without a full-on attack, something behind the scenes underhanded was done to them to injure their economy and so on. But that president just said, no, we're not going to just rush into war like that. God should say, I'm going to change the rules here now. This president and your old army and so on, your, your heaven is yours. You went through 10 years of being subjected to the evil that this other country was doing to you, this other president, and he didn't rush in to fight and send off missiles on them. Because had you done that, 50 more thousand people would have died on earth in that war. But you didn't. So for 10 years you suffered that until something could be worked out. Um, you, you, you held your, your cool for 10 years. Heaven is now yours. Find somebody else to run the country. Come up here. You got heaven. God doesn't do that. But instead, in the Bible, they're telling us that heaven is just there just for you to go to like that. No, God needs to change his stuff. Romans chapter 1 and verse 18. Look at what that says. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Now, you know when you read of the wrath of God in the Bible, like in, I won't read it now, but I think it's Jeremiah chapter 4. And he's talking about the wrath of God coming upon the children of Israel. Um, and it ends up talking about the sword going through them from an enemy nation that's going to come and discipline them as punishment. So that's the kind of feeling and thought that comes to your mind. The wrath of God, the sword, so you're getting death. So the wrath of God, the, 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 the anger of God is revealed from heaven. From that place of blessing against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. You see, a wrath is coming from out of heaven, that place that we're all dying to get to. It's like God just has this storehouse of anger up there, and everybody is saying they want to die and go to heaven, or they want to go there when they die. Seems a little bit kind of odd to me. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6. Here it is one. And hath raised us up together and made us sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Again, heavenly places. You are sitting in heavenly places. Can you explain that really? Because they told me all the explanations when I was a boy in church. But can you really explain sitting in heavenly places? When you know if war breaks out now, you can't go more than a week or two where food is concerned for survival. You've been thinking for so long, I better store up some water, I better get some food together. You don't have the money to do it and you wouldn't have the place to properly store them. 
stuff start growing in your water because you're trying to save it for so long. Like, how are you going to survive all that stuff? But you are in heavenly places, but you're looking at nothing but doom and terror here on earth. And the terror of the bombs might not actually drop where you're at. But the sheer thought of the terror of hunger pains going through your body like the worms of hell coming through your body is enough just to let you know there should be a wake-up call in your mind that you are not sitting in heavenly places when you're worried about the future and when those bombs start to kick off. Are you going to be telling yourself, I am in Christ, I am in Yeshua, in heavenly places? This heaven stuff is kind of strange in the Bible. Ephesians 3 and verse 10 is the last one here. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Why does the manifold wisdom of God not give you some fresh new knowledge about the new things he is doing about conveying all the mysteries and the wisdom that is in heaven as it relates to your life and your dream of going there. The wisdom of God never says, I need to revamp this whole stuff in the Bible about heaven. It is strange, because as much as they tell you in your religious setting that you should desire heaven, so that you don't focus on acquiring the stuff here on earth that will give you heavenly experiences on earth, while the others get it and you don't. Instead of teaching you like that, they tell you to dream of another world while they go on and take the world from under your feet. God does not have this manifold wisdom to try to change stuff so that you can be taught from a new Bible or a heavenly revised Bible, not a Bible revised by man with another version, but a version that comes out of heaven for 2019 and 2030 and so on to deal with the issues that will come up in the next 5, 10, 15 years. For the next two or three decades when you need to pass on the teachings of life to your children for when you are gone. God doesn't try to give any fresh word to help you with that. To give some hope to your children. He stays with the same old doctrine of heaven. So the next time you really think on these scriptures when you are meditating. Ask yourself all these questions and let these thoughts run through your mind. When you say to yourself in the privacy of your own meditating and prayer time and study time. Why do I keep telling myself I am going to heaven? What's there to be desired in heaven? When my desires cannot be fulfilled on earth, God made a world and said to, to dominate it, replenish, be fruitful and so on, and you should have dominion. So he gave you a world where his word cannot be fulfilled because you cannot have dominion on earth. God did all this elaborate creation and setup of earth, they told us, and said, this is for your dominion and it is impossible to fulfill his word and it is also impossible for him to cause you to have dominion in the box that he set you in, this earth. But he gives you the promise of another world and tells you that it will be yours as well. If he can't fulfill this one, why do you want the next one? See, he's not like some mechanic that didn't fix your car properly, said, okay, well, I got this other one here, I'll give you a good price on it because your car is really done for. He couldn't fix it, so he said, look, you just need to get into another car. That one has too many problems. Maybe you get more trust him, plus you're desperate, you just need to get out of that car, you go with the other one, you tinker with whatever little problems it has. But God is like no one else. So when he makes a product, when he makes a world, 
when he makes this world system, if he can't deliver that dominion and blessing to you, why are you still dreaming of another gift from God, the gift of going to heaven? And you believe it so much that you actually say, yeah, I am in heavenly places as well. Rethink the Torah. Rethink the New Testament. Rethink God.